So I hope that's been a helpful introduction uh, to what we're really trying to grapple with today. Um, and I really want to start, before we get into the, the meat of what I am going to say, to, to just make reference to the fact that this passage contains quite a lot that we're not going to cover. Um, there is a, obviously a, a much wider discussion here that, that we could have about how God ordains those in authority and how we read that in, in the context uh, of places like Afghanistan in, in our time and what that might mean. Um, there's also a whole discussion that could be had um, around uh, Christendom and the sort of Constantinianism, uh, sort of the, uh, uh, and then now in these days in what some people are calling a post-Christendom world, um, and and the whole relationship between church and state, it's a ton that we could talk about there. Um, we're not going to be covering those issues uh, really tonight. We're thinking about what what does it mean to uh, to speak up which is the theme, what does it mean to engage in advocacy and in, in politics effectively? Uh, what does it mean uh, for us as Christians, um, particularly within the context of uh, climate care, creation care? And, and the first thing that really we need to know um, is, is that actually we can't avoid it. Actually, politics in some ways is part of the water that we swim in. Um, uh, and it, it's we all engage in politics, whether or not we think we are or not. Uh, verse six talks about paying taxes. Now, either you pay your taxes, or you don't pay your taxes. But but either way, you are making some sort of political statement, um, wh whether you do or you don't. You're making some sort of uh, statement about. Uh, what you believe is right and what you uh, and, and how you want to act um, and potentially how you feel about the governing authorities um, and, and so we're all engaged in some way in uh, political action most of us I think most days of the week don't think about politics we don't necessarily think about um, what's going on but we are actually there and we are involved in our society we're involved in our communities the very fact that we are as Christians we are not uh, Amish for instance we are not completely separating ourselves from church and state um, we are not completely separating ourselves from society and, and that in itself because we are not doing that we are in some ways making a statement a political statement so we can't really avoid it uh, but but also actually engaging in our society and engaging in in politics for our society and engaging with the authorities the governing authorities of our nation uh, is something that is on, honoring to God's word you know this is just one of a number of passages that I could point to there's also another famous one uh, in in one Peter but there are other places, uh, despite the times that these the, the authors were living in, at the, uh, you know, in, in those early days of the church, um, seeing at times great persecution and great issue, and 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 was seen as a as a disruptive minority, and at times were quite harshly persecuted. And yet, even in those times, they are saying actually we should uh, we should be obedient to the ruling authorities. It's got a bold statement to make uh, for for the the authors in their original contexts, um, uh, and and so we in our in our current state where we are uh, not certainly in our nation uh, under any great persecution, why should we have so so much difficulty in the idea uh, that God's word is telling us to obey uh, the authorities under which we are under? But it does, and we should. Um, so it's honouring to God's word. Um, thirdly, and perhaps um, right at the core uh, of, of what it is to be a Christian, is that it is a way to love our neighbours. It may not seem like that on the surface. In some ways, it feels like engaging in politics and engaging with your governing authorities is almost a way to avoid having to engage with those around us. Um, but it's actually a really important part of the of the process of actually trying to help people of being an advocate for the least, the last, and the lost. 
for giving voice to those at times who have no voices and politics engaging with uh, with politicians and authorities and powers is part of that Desmond Tutu said this that there comes a point where we need to stop stop just pulling people out of the water we need to go upstream and find out why they're falling in and this is a great example um, and, and actually you know for perhaps a, a more uh, local and up-to-date example um, we there needs to get to a point where we need to stop just um, building new food banks and go upstream and say okay why have we got such a problem um, in our society today so much actual food poverty going on or to quote John Stott it, it is always good to feed the hungry it is better if possible to eradicate the causes of hunger so if we truly love our neighbours and want to serve them our service may oblige us to take political action on their behalf and so there, there is part of this that is actually about loving our neighbours. Um, I, I uh, had a wistful memory uh, during the, the video earlier on of actually going on the big Make Poverty History March in Edinburgh. Um, a whole load of us went across on a bus. Um, and uh, although the bus had been arranged uh, by a church, I, I invited a whole bunch of other people who, who were friends who were not Christians. Um, but we we all went and we all shared in that march and that call to eradicate uh, in particular the debt of developing nations and um, it was great to actually hear that that did have an impact I think at times I, I wasn't even aware that anything significant had happened um, and people will be coming on Saturday to the big climate march um, and, and they want to uh, they want to make a stand and they want to make a statement and that statement is a is a political a global political statement um, and and that is something that actually yes I think we should engage in that's why there's a, a big faith block um, and there's been statements made by um, by the Church of Scotland and other and, and other uh, Christian groups and other faith groups saying actually we believe that our world leaders need to make in these important decisions about climate change and again it's a political statement and part of it is driven by the need uh, by the desire to love our neighbors particularly our neighbors in the global south but not not just them uh, but but lastly um, I believe that to, to engage in this is actually for mission there's a missional aspect to engaging um, in uh, in the politics nationally and in particular locally I think it's an important part of being uh, a church it's an important part of being disciples of Jesus um, I have quoted this before and I will quote it again uh, Mark Clifton in his book uh, Reclaiming Gl Glory uh, so he says that a successful church is one that establishes a pattern of making disciples who make disciples that results in the community being noticeably better and and, and he says you know one of the challenges for the church um, is that actually the disciples the people of Jesus are light in the darkness and therefore a community that has a church should be noticeably different because of those people and as those disciples make new disciples which is part of our calling to mission that actually that community should get better as a result and and, and you know the challenging question is uh, you know if if your church overnight disappeared would your community notice what impact would it have on your community and, and you want to be in a place where people who have have no uh, relationship with your church uh, on a person to person level are still able to say actually that that place there those people there they are important to the community that I live in I see the impact that they have um, it's such a powerful message and it can be something that calls people in 
that makes them question, that makes them ask questions about, um, you know, what, why is it that you have hope? Why is it that you love others? Uh, the Emperor Julian in the fourth century uh, famously uh, said this. He said, "Atheism, by which he means um, kind of believing in one God rather than believing in all the the Roman gods, uh, it's not not how he would think of atheism." But he said, "Atheism has been specially advanced through the loving service rendered to strangers, and through their care for the burial of the dead. It is a scandal that there is not a single Jew who is a beggar." And that the godless Galileans, that's the Christians, care not only for their own poor, but for ours as well. While those who belong to us look in vain for the help that we should render them. And again, there's a sense that uh, some of what's happening now in our society with things like food banks is, is showing that. Um, that actually uh, people are saying why do we have on the one hand they're saying why do we have food banks but on the other hand actually it is to the shame of the ruling authorities uh, that that the poor of the nation are being looked after uh, by predominantly faith groups so there is a a definite missional need to be involved locally and nationally in in political action um, in speaking out uh, for those who have no voice it, it's not just um, I, I think sometimes as Christians our temptation is to engage in political action that's about Christian things um, and to get all het up about uh, things that matter to Christians but don't matter to anyone else and, and I'm not sure that's really uh, what, what Paul is, is talking about here um, or, or actually in, in terms of the political engagement within the early church I think their engagement was about engaging for the sake of others engaging uh, for those who have no voice engaging in advocacy for the homeless for the refugee for the asylum seeker engaging uh, in, in advocacy and, and action for um, those in desperate poverty or great debt. Perhaps one of the best examples in, in the current church is the work of something like Christians Against Poverty, who have uh, managed to in, engage um, with, with thousands of people to see them released from crippling debt. And they do so in a way that also promotes the gospel of Jesus and sees many people come to faith because of the work that they do. But they also engage in political action uh, to try and solve some of the, the problems of debt and the, re the reasons for debt. Thing, things like gambling, things like uh, far too easy access to uh, credit cards and, and all of the other things that have led to great debt in uh, in our society but they have never done it without uh, by sacrificing the, the gospel at the core of what they do and, and saying actually we do what we do because of the message of Jesus we love people because of because Jesus called us to love them and because of the way that God loved us um, and so it's a great example of how these things actually fit together and interact together so let's speak up Let's speak up for those who are struggling to speak. Let's speak up for creation, for the poor of the global south and those impacted already by the climate chaos in the world. Let's speak up for those in our own uh, country. And let's speak up for those in our own community for the sake of the gospel for the sake of mission, to, to show the love of God to others and to ultimately give, give honour to who is owed the highest honour and that's to God who calls us to live in this way. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, it's very odd to think of authorities in, in this kind of manner. Um, and to 
consider what it means as Christians to engage with politics when so often we just want to avoid it. And yet you call us to engage. You call us to engage uh, in submission to your word. You call us to engage for the love of those around us. And ultimately for the sake of mission, for the sake of your kingdom. Lord, help us to be a church that makes disciples, who make disciples, that result in our community being noticeably better, that actually those who are of no faith and a non-Christian faith would actually go, this place is different. This place is better because these people, these Christians, have spoken up and acted on behalf of those who have no voice and Lord that because of that we would be a vehicle for your kingdom coming in Jesus name Amen